Okay. Then did I share? Let me share. Here we go. Now we're ready. <clears throat> so welcome. Uh, I'm Cindy Myers, and tonight we're going to have a webinar on intuitive listening, and the topic is fear and change, <clears throat> or the fear of change. You can look at it from a lot of different angles, and there's a lot of aspects to change, so we'll get into some of those. But before we get going too far into the topic, if you're having a medical emergency, please call your doctor or 911. But what I can do for you is clear any uh, trapped emotions that might be blocking your natural healing ability, which will also help calm you down and rebalance your energy, clear your chakras, do lots of uh, work on helping you, your body's natural healing's ability to get you through that emergency. So um, there are things I can do to support you, but I don't um, diagnose and you definitely want to call your doctor if there's something urgent happening. So let's talk about how fear works. Let's just dive right in. So um, you know, we all have fear. Uh, it is very rare that people, <laughs> there's, it's very, very rare. It happens that some people have a disconnect from that fight or flight response system. But for overall, most of us have uh, a basic fear in, instinct about us. And, and it's true for all species for the most part. Uh, reptiles, it's, that's why it's called the, the reptilian brain because it is that part of the brain that they have that works is about survivability. And we also have that little reptile brain that works almost identical to all these different species of animals. <clears throat> and it just is our instinct in a, to survive, to survive the world. And how it works is that it, when, it, when we get frightened of in any way, shape or form, that fight or flight response kicks in. And we usually have to do one of a couple things. We run, we fight, or we freeze. You know, and we'll pick one of those options. And there might be a couple other, uh, other options that we don't use as much. These are the main ones that we use that, that happens when, we, when that fear state gets triggered. And it can happen because you know somebody runs a red light and oh my gosh, you slam on the brakes. We need that fight or flight response system so that it is reactionary. We, we can't go through the huge thought process that our cognitive brain wants to do and saying, oh dear, there's somebody coming and running a red light and I better now take my foot off the gas and put it on the brake. That would take too long. Right, so we need to be able to see something and immediately react, and it needs to be very, very fast. That's the good news that it can help us and helps us to survive an incident like that. And that's what it's designed for. On the other side, when we have emotions of fear, something we're worried about, uh, anxious about, depressed about, overwhelmed by, uh, discouraged, frustrated, any of these emotions, they all have component of fear. And when those get kicked in, then it works the exact same way as somebody running the red light. It doesn't, our, our lizard brain isn't able to discern that, oh, this is just an emotional experience of, that isn't really, your life isn't in, in, in a threatening situation or not. It it, it will just react by freezing, running away or getting mad at it, you know, getting into conflict. And so for a lot of us, uh, we freeze, we procrastinate, we run away from it. Uh, running away might be a total avoidance, you know, with just put my, your fingers in your ears, <laughs> close your eyes and go la la la. You know, you pretend that it, does, it isn't even happening. So, Lizard brain is saying, hey, there's a warning. This is something uncomfortable. I don't want to, this is danger. We better do something. And it's going to start putting us into a habit that isn't always conscious. We're not always conscious of that habit. So <clears throat> how does that work with change? Especially, you know, a lot of us are excited about it. Maybe it's an exciting change. We really want to do it. Uh, it could be, you know, that we're so frustrated in our work and 
hating our jobs and we got a new job opportunity or, or we decide we want to apply for a new job, whatever that might be, maybe we do have a new job coming um, and, and we're excited by this change, but guess what? There's fear about it because it's unknown. We don't know what really we have an imag we have a fantasy or an, we hope um, we imagine what it's going to look like, but we really don't know because we haven't experienced it yet. So if there's an, an unknown component to it, so our fear brain kicks in, going, "Oh, that's scary. There's something in the forest. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know, this new path. I don't know where this is taking us." And so now we're in fear brain. So if you're finding that you're blocked from making the change, maybe there's some sabotaging happening. Maybe you don't make the change. Or well, maybe you don't apply on that job that you really want to do. Uh, go after you procrastinate and you miss the deadline. There's lots of ways of blocking ourselves from that change. And it's coming from that fear brain, that lizard brain that says, oh, I, I rather stay in this known state, even though I don't like it, but at least I know it because this other place is just too scary. I don't know what that's gonna play out. So that's how fear really impacts change. It's that simple. It really isn't that complicated of a concept, but the change part of it, <laughs> the key to it is becoming aware of it. That yes, change is going to have impact and trigger our fear brain. And being aware that it will, now you have power because we'll have tools to be able to overcome that fear piece so that we can pursue it. And, and it gets more complicated because you know what is is my intuition telling me this isn't the right path? <laughs> you know, it just sounds the same. It can feel the same by say, sending my intuition going, like, ooh, bad choice, bad choice, bad choice. So it's learning to listen and think through, is this just fear brain or is this my intuition telling me not to do it this route? And you know what? It's okay. Even if you listen to fear brain, there's going to be another opportunity ahead. We're not going to be perfect about making change. The other thing to understand about the change process, it actually follows, I find that it actually follows and mimics the grieving process. <laughs> because you, there's a part of us that we're going to change. We're going to be a different entity in whatever this change is happening in our lives. And so there's a uh, 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 we're actually going to grieve the loss of who we were as we grow into this new person that we're uh, embarking on. And so you will experience some of those stages of that Elizabeth Kubler Ross talks about in <clears throat> in the five stages of grief. You you might have the uh, denial and uh, anger, <laughs> all these different steps. You avoid it. You'll pretend it isn't happening. Uh, may, you might need the anger. Now the anger is kind of an interesting part of the process because sometimes we use anger as a catalyst. So even though it, we talk about these negative emotions and, and we try and avoid them or, or say they're bad, it's not, a, not, it's not a true statement. There is a purpose to these negative emotions. It's just being conscious of it. So anger can actually be the fire, the fire for change, that catalyst that motivates us to really, you know what, I am fed up to here with this job. I don't want to be here anymore. Um, I don't, I know I'm scared about making the change, but I'm doing it because I'm so done. So the chain that we can use that anger to finally motivate us. It's healthier if we can recognize it and choose without the anger, but we can still use that anger to motivate us. <laughs> yogi, that's enough, honey. That's a good boy. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's my yogi boy talking. He sounds like um, uh, Scooby Doo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I am. So, <clears throat> so we can then use that process. So, um, just be aware that we can actually grieve in the change process. So, <clears throat> and then there, I'd like to talk a little bit uh, about in change, I love the, the metaphor of from caterpillar to the butterfly as, as the metaphor for change. 
because there's one part of the process of going from caterpillar to the butterfly that that isn't understood real well and i think that is the piece that 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 is the best story in understanding the change process and why we get stuck and so when we're when there's the caterpillar is getting ready to do its thing it 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 starts to eat itself you know, it, eats, it eats and eats and then it starts to build its cocoon and then it needs to start eating itself it actually eats itself and it dissolves into this pile of goo dna goo fluidy stuff so it's no longer a caterpillar <laughs> and it but it's, hang on hang on i'm gonna have to hang on <laughs> hold that thought <laughs> Uh, let me stop share for a second. Whoop. I will be back. Let me let him out. Okay. Sorry about that. Animals. <laughs> it's live. It's real. <laughs> All right, back to where we were. Um, I don't need to keep. Yeah, I do. All right, here we go. So I was talking about the the caterpillar. It's now in its cocoon. It's dissolved itself. It's no longer a caterpillar, and it's in this DNA gooey mess that's inside the caterpillar, in inside its cocoon. But it's not yet a butterfly. So in the change process. When you're in the midst of change, there is this phase where you're no longer the caterpillar, but you're not yet the butterfly. You haven't grown into, you haven't fully implemented the change yet. It hasn't fully integrated into your psyche. And that this part of the process when you're neither the caterpillar or the butterfly is really uncomfortable. And this, and this is where the fear part really tr gets triggered and kicks in because it, it, we don't know exactly how this is supposed to play out. Where, the, where it's different than the caterpillar metaphor and the, to the butterfly metaphor is that a lot of people give up and they get blocked and they say, you know what, I'd rather go back to my safe place. So they are able to, you are able to go back to the caterpillar phase, in other, in other words. <clears throat> and so a lot of people go only so far and then they get afraid of this final ch change because they just don't know how this is going to play out and they will go backwards. Now, if you can handle and then become aware that this is just part of the phase that, and the process that we all have to go through when we're going through this change cycle, if you can be aware of it, breathe through it. Well, you talk about these tools in a second, go through all this part of it, then you can go all the way through. Now you become the butterfly, you break free and you can experience what this change was all about. And hopefully with our intentions and hard work, you get to realize that this is pretty darn, darn good. <laughs> it was worth the effort. This is a better, more authentic you by working through that uncomfortable part of the process of change. So that's where fear, this is where fear really likes to take hold, is in that gooey mess of where you're not neither here nor there. So let's talk about um, <clears throat> how you can get through some of this. Uh, so again, it's the same tools that we always talk about. <laughs> the first part is just breathing. Uh, we want to breathe, okay? You want to use the positive emotions at this point. So you want to use gratitude. Uh, add that into your breath. Slow down your breathing. Do some slow breathing. Add in gratitude. Add in peace and calm. Add in kindness, uh, <clears throat> joy, love, love or above. You want one of those higher frequency emotions. Here, I'll show you. You want one of these higher frequency emotions of love or above to help you. That will help calm you down and calm down that fear voice, that fear brain talking to you. And it also provides some of that catalyst instead of the anger that we talked about that you can use as a catalyst to help you through the change. 
you can actually use some of these other emotions that are even healthier for you. They don't cause the digestive disruption and stress and all the other stuff that the anger comes along. We can actually have a different option. There's another way of doing it than just using anger. So we can make change more mindfully and that's healthier for us and it's empowering it's more empowering then because you're making these choices and you're using the their your tools to help you through it so <clears throat> it's not not um the tools are easy the implementation isn't always because the fear brain is pretty strong and depending on how strong the habit is uh depends on how readily you might be able to access some of these tools. So I'm gonna pull this chart up here or this slide of, of your chakra system. And, and when we get trapped emotions and energy blocking in any of these um, power systems of the chakras, especially the lower three, um, but any of them, really any of them you can get trapped emotions stuck in there that can help or work against you in making the changes. Again, these are power systems. So they say, uh, you know what? It, it, I got attracted emotions. I got, I got burned. I got burned and my heart got hurt. I really put my heart and soul into this change and it didn't pan out. So I might get attracted emotions in, in, in my heart chakra, you know, failure, frustration, grief, all sorts of, because of that, you know, put my heart and soul into this change and it didn't work, pan out. So it, the main emotion may got may have gotten landed in that heart chakra. So now that I'm ready to make another change, guess what? Fear is going to kick in and say, oh, last time you went, put yourself out there and really made yourself vulnerable and you were really put your heart and soul into it, you got burned. I, you sure you want to do that? I think, I don't think so. Let's, you know, back off, back off, back off. That's fear brain talking, going, oh, we're not going to get, let get, you don't want to get hurt like that again. So there's a distortion in there because of the previous one. And it's going, oh, that's a bad idea. <laughs> and so it can come in and sabotage the change that I really thinking, oh, this is really cool. I really want to do this. But lizard brain going, oh, no, no, no. remember, remember. <laughs> so we can actually, if we're not conscious of it, because of that heart shock, the distortion of, of a past experience can now unconsciously block us from moving ahead, or we can actually then repeat the same thing from happening. We can actually then unconsciously um, attract a similar experience where my heart will get broken again because of this change. So it's about clearing those trapped emotions in all these different, wherever the chakra may be, or, or and it can be in all of them, but we want to clear those trapped emotions and then recognize, I think this is just blocked energy, trapped emotion, fear talking. I can have a different experience. It's a different experience, a different opportunity, different thing to try and do. And by changing my mindset, now I'm attracting the a different outcome, a different storyline, a different plot line. It doesn't have to be the same plot line. Okay, so <laughs> with all that, uh, if you want some help in making some changes in your life, uh, I recommend um, either the starter package or the quick cleanse, especially if we just need to clear some trapped emotions. You're really good with the tools, time to, you just know that there's some junk in there. So let's clear that that old stuff out of the way so that you have room now to make more momentum to make your change happen. And you might want to check out some of my books. I have a new one that's uh, close to being public, being ready about half, you know, a little over halfway through illustrating another children's book. So look forward to sharing that one with you very soon. And here's my upcoming events. I'll be having a healing circle next Saturday or this upcoming Saturday, July 16th. You should be getting uh, emails on that uh, tomorrow. And you can sign up from either the website or these emails. And then next Wednesday will be a, another healing circle, just the healing circle, no webinar. 
there will not be a healing circle that the July 23rd. Um, I'll be uh, busy that day doing other things. And then, but I will have another animal and emotions webinar at the end of the month. So look for all these new events and then we'll get the August calendar up pretty soon. So lots happening this summer and I'm staying pretty close to the farm. So if you need appointments, I have openings on my calendar. Uh, no, no vacations for me just yet. <laughs> so um, let's get going with some of your changes and supporting. Them. All right, I'm gonna uh, stop sharing there. Well, we got a few more people on since we started. Um, any questions? Thoughts? Everybody's quiet. Uh, you can type it in or unmute yourself if you have any questions. Anybody like to experience removing trapped emotions that they haven't experienced before or know that you, even if you haven't experienced before, perhaps you would like to have something removed? Anybody? Uh, Donna, yes. Okay. Uh, do you have voice capability, Donna? You want to unmute yourself? It's a little easier if you do have. Um, Gail is yes, too. If not, then we can do Donna over the. Uh, I'll say ask unmute. Does that help unmute? I don't know. Can you type it in the chat box if you have? Voice capability, Donna. Oh, it looks like. Hey, Donna. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Just let me know when you're ready. Is there something? Um, Okay, uh, she suggests I go with Gail first. All right, Gail, you on, you're up. Okay, yeah, I've, I've just, um, I know we, we're in a intense full moon time, yeah. but I, I'm just feeling, um, oh, just a wave of emotions. It goes from one extreme to the next, and I'm just trying to get that a little bit balanced and, um, be a little bit steadier. So I wondered if you could find anything interesting to release for sure. Okay. Well, whenever I feel unsteady like that, uh, um, th these intense energies, external energies is to really ground yourself. So we, we have to put a little more intention on the grounding. So think about that. And let's see what I can clear for Gail. <sighs> Frustration, I'm going to clear that. Dread, clearing that. Lack of control, clearing that. Overwhelm, clearing that. I'm sure the dogs are probably sensing it as well, aren't they? Oh, sure they are. Yeah. So there's a household because I'm I'm feeling a about a household distortion um, that we've gotten in the past. Okay. The, the energy of the whole household is off kilter. Mm. Um, maybe from hormones, maybe from lunar stuff astrological stuff sure. and probably in the and statement <laughs> and and mom and dad energy stuff so it's all uh, a lot of the dogs energies are are extreme mm. yeah so that's impacting you and bruce because you're trying to hold it all together uh which then makes your energy more crazy which then makes the dog's energy more crazy. So yeah. you're that negative feedback loop, <laughs> in other words. So that, we really uh, want to do a, uh, a household clearing at some point. 
We'll make an appointment for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Donna, are you ready now? Yep, I am. All right, great. <laughs> hey, Donna. <laughs> Hi. Is there um, something specific you want me to try and clear for you or just go yes. and see what I do? Um, yeah, I have, uh, oh, I've been doing such, so much great work and I feel so um, good about the um, trapped emotions I've been working on and uh, releasing limiting beliefs. But I came across something over the last couple of days that um, kind of stopped me in my tracks and made me uh, wonder if maybe I should take a break um, or get some help on this one because um, I came up with, as I was tapping through with EFT, um, dreams never do come true and they certainly won't for me. Mm. Um, and then it kind of led into trust. Don't trust myself, don't trust God. And this is new for me, so I'm wondering <laughs> If you can catch anything in that for me. Okay. Those are, you know, those are actually quite common again in the change. That's lizard brain <laughs> coming right through. That's a perfect example of lizard brain talking to you because you're starting to make a really big change internally. Um, your, your, your growth is is growing into your more authentic self and that's scary yeah. it makes you feel vulnerable uh, putting your real self out as you strip away some of these personas and masks that we've learned to put on and that's natural to put them on especially as we go through teenage years and into our 20s and even our 30s you know there's expectations and roles that we put on but they don't always match as we start growing into our authentic self there's a mismatch they're not For quite sure. the right thing oh. anymore they don't fit anymore we outgrow them and yeah. so letting go of those that's that thing that i've talked about you're in the soup <laughs> which is uncomfortable which makes you want to give up and what it feels like because of that discomfort then lizard brain comes in and it interprets it with a, its narrative which just says you're not worthy, you're not good enough, your dreams aren't meant to happen for you. So let's work on clearing some of that out because that's not true. Yeah. And that's a good thing when you hear that voice to just say that, that's not true. Who says? <laughs> that's what I say. Like, who says? <laughs> who, who, who made that the truth? Yeah. And because it's not. And then, and then you just kind of, it, it can help shift. Then you do the breathing and the gratitudes and put in the peace and calm or something like that, that, and then reshift it saying, I do deserve, I am worthy. Okay. I can make, not only can I make my dream come true, but I can exceed my dreams. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, there was a nice shift just now. With mm -hmm. that message right there, I just felt down your spine. Mm -hmm. So you're carrying some of that stress in your neck and back, especially lower back, kind of mid lower back. So releasing depression. Oh, there we go. So that released out of your neck. I think you can turn your neck better now. Yay. Uh, I do carry stuff in my neck a lot. Yeah, that's common to carry our stress and worries in our neck. Unsupported, I'm clearing that. And that unsupported can be our own unsupported, not just from others or both. It can be an and statement. But that, that, that narrative is an unsupportive self-talk. Mm -hmm. So we're going to clear that. Resentment, clearing that. Failure, clearing that. 
There's the distortion in the chakras, like I talked about. What is the main distortion? Is there any? Okay, second chakra is where the distortion in this particular issue, the main distortion is coming out of your second chakra. So let's see what I can clear out of there. <laughs> Worry, fear, defensiveness, and all that. Oh, and creative insecurity, clearing that. So creative insecurity is slightly different than insecurity in that it's more about your authentic voice. It could be to, you know, if you're an artist and you just don't like to share, you know, you're worried about people seeing your artwork, it can be that literal, but for others, it's also related to authentic voice. So I think that is a pro might be a better fit. It could be an and statement because I don't know where, what you're moving your changes into, but, um, but to, it feels like just that fear of showing your authentic self and seeing your authentic so, self as well. So clearing that and retuning you to peace and calm. And there's the shift. So I would encourage you when you hear that voice to use those tools. And it sounds like you have other tools of maybe tapping or something like that. Yeah. Those are all good ones to use to help you break up, but definitely switch the dialogue. And I do like when I'm making a, bit, a change of, especially a sizable one, uh, and maybe I'm not quite there yet, <laughs> or I'm, I know that I need to make a change or, it's time to make a bigger change. Mm -hmm. I set the intention of whatever it is better be, it, it, it just has to be really outstanding because what I'm doing now is pretty cool. So it better be even better. Mm -hmm. I set those intentions, even though I don't fully know what, what it's gonna come out to be yet. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what the change is because I'm still maybe the caterpillar heading into the cocoon or maybe I'm in the cocoon and is uncomfortable but I set that intention so that whatever I come out on the other side is going to be worth the effort it better be worth the effort <laughs> this is hard work making yeah. change so it better be good <laughs> so well, setting I, intention now you're setting that that traction you're setting that attraction of, of what to come and I to be honest with people about <laughs> they've asked me many times over they ask me if I living the life that I, I, I've dreamt of, you know, what's it like to live the life I've dreamt of or something of that nature. And I, I said, I've exceeded that long ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is all stuff that I never in a million years thought I would be doing, not in a million years. So, so we can exceed, it's, it's, we always place the bar. We're putting the bar where, you know, how high we can go. Mm -hmm. and, changes and most of the time it's not high enough <laughs> I like to set it really high and if I don't make it over it's okay but you know what I'd rather get closer to it than just keep it easy yeah well I'm going to college right now and I'll be graduating here in a while and I'm supposed to make up my mind about what business I want to start and um, I keep changing my mind about how I want to help people I know I want to help people and um, but I keep changing my mind what that's going to look like. So creative insecurity is you just so accurate. I so accurate. I'm grateful. Well, I, I'm actually just coaching somebody in similar <laughs> uh, thing. So if you want more detailed coaching on yours, we can really get into that. And that's a wishy-washy thing. But it's also because maybe you're not there. You're in the soup. You don't have the answer yet. Yeah. I know in, in maybe in school, you're supposed to have a paper and write it all about it, but you know, yes. what might, but you know what, nobody's going to hold the gun to your head and say, yeah, <laughs> that, right. yeah. You know, my business has evolved and it, and if you're going to be in business, it better be. Yeah. And so where you're at right now is not going to be where you're at five years, 10 years, 15 years from now. Okay. And so I, I would help coach you then on where do you want to be for right now or yeah. in the next 
couple of years, guide you to that place and, and let go of the, I have to have it right. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. So uh, as an engineer, when I was in my engineering days, I used to be an engineer. I, I used to say, well, there's times when we have to shoot the engineer because they're always in the designing mode. Yeah. And, and when we're also good engineering practice and, the, and again, change process, all these follow that pattern that I learned as an engineer mm -hmm. is that when, especially in business is that I don't want to have, I don't want to have it perfect when I first start mm -hmm. because I'm going to invest a ton of time, a ton of money, a ton of energy trying to get it all perfect and then implement it and go, oh, I don't like it. This isn't working right. Yeah. And so you wasted a ton of time and ton of money, ton of energy on something. So it's important to kind of start and test when you're maybe at 50%, 60% sure of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe even 40%, maybe even 20%. It, you want to start testing little, at, at, you know, how you want to implement what you want to do and then add to it, improve. You're always testing and adding in, taking away. You know, it took a long time to figure out the right modality for my business model. I knew I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to do things, but, you know, and I didn't know what I didn't know yet, but I yeah. had to start somewhere. So I started doing things that, and a lot of, some things worked, some things didn't. So it was always assessing kind of like shopping <laughs> you're not gonna put on find you might be lucky to find the right outfit <laughs> at the get-go but sometimes you have to try things on yeah and sure. go, oh that that one I like it but it makes my butt look too big no. <laughs> right right yeah <laughs> for sure. so, oh. so that you know oh this is kind of the style or the color that works well for me mm -hmm. so now you, you've narrowed things down so that would be some of the coaching that we would go through is helping you understand and I can help <laughs> take some of even my engineering processes and and without being an engineer but the process is the same mm -hmm. you want to start and test and then start implementing seeing how things work a little bit and as you grow into your more authentic self your business will become more you but you don't you're not there yet yeah yeah I you wait as you were speaking that's what came to mind was I can't start until it's perfect. And yet I've run businesses that have gotten better over time. Um, it's just, those were very defined. You know, it was a nonprofit. We had a mission, da, 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 da. This is me just putting myself out there. Um, and this feels very foreign to me. How am I gonna measure, um, you know, if it's um, effective or not? We had, you know, in our, um, in our programs that we delivered in the nonprofit, they would go down the checklist and you know it was effective or was not effective based on the data that we collected. I don't know how to make that same equation with me putting myself out there to help people and that's kind of where I'm stuck. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Uh, I do the same kind of work, you know, and there's there are metrics that you can use. <laughs> so we can go over that in session in a, in a, in a, I'll in be in a touch session. With that. And, and I would recommend the starter because that will take okay. 40, a good 45 minutes just to even get it started. But there are processes for you and intuition to listen to your intuitive self more in designing those processes. But there's a lot of different things that I can guide you to because otherwise you're putting the cart before the horse. And that's what it sounds like and why you might be stuck is because you're thinking this, I have to do this thing and yeah. we've got to take a step back. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so very much. Okay. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any, uh, let's see, somebody else said something, Gail, Donna, no, no. anybody else want any clearings? Because what we're going to do right after this is do a healing circle. For anybody that would like to stay on, we'll do go right into a healing circle. <clears throat> so anybody else want anything cleared? Yes, no. Going once, twice. All right. I'm gonna stop the